Welcome to our On Your Side News Channel 5 Consumer Special. I'm Joy Benedict. Folks in this East Side community are waking up confused and they're waking up with a lot of questions. First, they want to know who is this neighbor that's been living next door? Who is Anthony E. Soul? And more importantly, this morning, they want to know who were the six women found dead inside his home. That's right, guys. We are live right now downtown. We're actually on the corner of East 13th and Superior, and the body was found here in this building behind me. We have new information this hour on this double shooting right here on Cleveland's West Side. As you said, we are live at Park, Ohio, a manufacturing plant where two people lost their lives today. I want to introduce you guys to a car that's very, very important to those of us in Northeast Ohio. And this is it. It's the Chevy Cruze. Good morning and burr. I feel like I say that every year this time of year. But once again, we are standing outside in the cold and it is cold and it is blustery and it is windy and that just makes it feel even worse. When our creep rolled up, these young girls knew exactly what to do. They stomped, they ran back to their aunt's house and they called 911. Like it or not, this parking lot is private property and that means that they have the right to charge you a pedestrian fee. Since the incident, things have changed here at the Quigley house. The kids are no longer allowed to play in the front yard. Mom even drew a line literally in the driveway so kids can't get close enough to possibly be approached by a stranger. That's right, Lydia. We are live outside Park, Ohio, which is closed tonight. It's been closed since the shooting, and a small memorial is starting to grow outside here in the front lawn. As folks remember, the two employees who were gunned down on the job yesterday, two employees we're learning more about tonight. That's a very good boy. Very good. Desidero Pupo is talking about his son, Eduardo. He was gunned down inside Park, Ohio at his workstation. And although Mr. Pupo's English may be hard to understand, his emotion is not. Today is a you see, Mr. Pupo lost not only a son Friday afternoon, but his ex-wife. Graciela Morales, the mother of two of his children, was also murdered in her own car, shot multiple times. A heartbreaking loss for her co-workers and those who loved her. 22 years living and together like this. Police say the gunman was Graciela's current boyfriend, Pedro Rodriguez. Family members tell us he was jealous of Graciela's friendship with her stepson. Graciela very good. Graciela very good. Never problem with Graciela. After grabbing her work ID off her dying body, we're told Rodriguez broke into the plant, shooting Eduardo, a father of three, six times. A one boy in the 22 years and two years. Eduardo had only been in Ohio five years, working to support his family back home in Cuba. No have a problem with anybody. One man's loss of a son, a wife, a community's devastation, two senseless deaths, incomprehensible in any language. <laughs> Such a heartbreaking story for the people who are working here and those who knew these victims. In fact, you know, several people were working here at the plant when this shooting happens. That's why Park, Ohio is shut down, as I said, since Friday, since the shooting happened. It's going to remain closed until Monday morning. And Monday morning is also when we should expect to see some charges from the prosecutor's office for that suspect who was caught just a little while after the shooting. He is in police custody tonight. The broken glass and ashes make it clear what happened in this east side home. But if these charred walls could talk, they would surely mention this man. I hope you don't put this on. Jerry Thomas is a little camera shy. In fact, few on Cleveland Road knew his name, but one family sure is thankful he was standing outside at about 10 Sunday morning. The nurse or whatever came running out the house and uh, help, help. Jerry saw smoke then heard a 10-year-old girl was still inside and he took off running. She the door in, she's scared. She's standing at the top of the stairs, scared. But that little girl wasn't the only one here. She lives in this home with her mother and 72-year-old grandmother, Irma Nimmons. She's not ambulatory. She suffered a stroke in uh, November of 2009. Victor had just moved his mom back into her house. They had her hospital bed set up in the dining room. And although Jerry couldn't see her through the smoke, he heard her plea. I had forgot she was even in there. But when I went to go get the baby, you know, the mother, you know, the grandmother, she like, don't let me, you know, don't let me die like this. That's when Jerry didn't hesitate to grab Miss Nimmin's bed, push it as far as he could to the front door. Then he lifted her up and carried her outside to safety. He said that every step he took, um, the heat and the smoke knocked him back down to his knees. And since the electrical fire started here, Jerry had to walk past this burning room not once but twice to rescue two people he barely knew. God places people. And uh, 
He didn't have to help. But if he hadn't, Victor may have lost a niece, a mother, a lot more than his childhood home. So even though Jerry doesn't think he deserves it, Hero is the new name for this quiet man next door. Joy Benedict, 19 Action News. We've all heard of cougars, older women pursuing younger men. Heck, there's even a TV show based on the idea. Well, now researchers are saying it's all a big lie, a myth. Joy Benedict spent the evening tracking the elusive cougar, Joy. I certainly did. I was on the prowl for that cougar. But clearly, this cat hasn't earned her spots. And according to a new study, I never will. Look at that cute guy right there. I'd like to lick his body. That's my son. We see it on TV and in the tabloids, the cougar, an older woman with a younger man. But are they just a myth? No, I didn't see a cougar. No, I didn't see any cougars. A new study on dating by the University of Wales Institute says cougars are almost as extinct as the felines they're named for. They prey on smaller mammals, uh, sheep, a lot of livestock, that sort of thing. Younger, smaller male animals? I really couldn't say. <laughs> There are no cougars of any kind at the Metro Park Zoo, but this new study of 22,000 men and women says, like leopards, we don't change our spots, that men are mostly attracted to younger women. That makes sense, especially from a biological standpoint. Meaning as the lioness ages and can no longer bear cubs, the lion goes hunting for a pussycat who can't. Meanwhile, women tend to prowl for an older companion. I think that's true. My guy is 38. But across town of the Naughty Mermaid, folks aren't convinced that cougars are extinct. Working downtown, you see it all the time. I've been hit on by older women before, and it's not a, not a bad experience. Not bad, because although no one wants to be a cheetah, cougars have pride. Maybe 55 plus, very successful, and it is just living life, having fun. Something all us females, whether laugh, leopard, or lion, should be able to do. The zoo is a great sport today. Now, this study is also based on the assumption that cougars are looking for love, whereas everyone we spoke with said love isn't exactly what the cougars they know are necessarily prowling for. Joy Benedict, 19 Action News. In high definition, 19 Action News starts now. A car crashes into a home inside a family with two young kids. Next at 6.30, we are live at the scene of the accident. Women gathering today to empower others to stand up against domestic violence. I'm Joy Benedict. I'll have that story coming up. But first, a big win for the Brownies this afternoon. It's the first of the season, and we did it against Ocho Cinco and the Bengals. Mark Schwab as the game wrap-up. So what do you think of the game, and how do you feel about the coach now? Well, you can read more about the game and be a part of our web poll with our 19 to go app for iPhone and Droid. In other news, a fiery fatal crash in Sheffield Lake after a man slams his car into a home. Inside that home, a family with two young kids. 19 Action News reporter Jen Pachano is live at 630 with the exclusive new details. Jen. Canton police investigating a deadly overnight crash. A driver lost control of his car near 6th Street and Roland and rolled it through three front yards. Now the driver was killed and no one else was hurt. And police are not releasing an ID until his family can be notified. In Lorain County, police have identified the driver who crashed his car into a house on Eastern Heights Boulevard. Cops believe that 49-year-old Robert Kindra suffered a heart attack or a stroke just before that crash. The homeowner just bought the home eight months ago and they tell us it's the second serious crash that they've had in their front yard. Well, it's not road rage, but parking lot rage, and Cleveland cops need your help. Just before 3 this morning, a man was backing out of a parking spot on Carnegie downtown when he bumped another guy's pickup truck. That's when the drivers got out of their cars and started arguing. The pickup truck driver punched the other driver, causing him to fall and hit the pavement. That victim was hospitalized at Metro. No condition is being released tonight. The suspect is still out there. And a man accused of murdering a mail carrier goes to trial on Monday. 20-year-old Randy Winston is accused of shooting 53-year-old Daniel Condes as he did his rounds in Maple Heights. Now, police believe robbery was the motive. If he's convicted, Winston could get the death penalty. It's a wheel, a wheel of justice. Now, let's go catch some bad guys. And here's the bad guy. This is Tyrone Jackson, still on the streets, accused of drug possession and possession of criminal tools. Now, where's Jackson hiding? 
It could mean cash in your pocket if you know. So call Crime Stoppers. The number's right there, 216-25-CRIME. Tips are anonymous, and if your information helps cops nab him, you can get a reward. Well, more trouble for a minority-owned trucking company. We told you last month how employees of Pretty Girl Trucking were getting shot at on the job. Well, it's happened once again. Owner Julie Cunningham says someone was shooting up their trucks this time at night. Now, that adds up to at least seven instances of target practice, and the repairs are certainly getting expensive. So far, there have been no arrests. If you know who's been shooting at these trucks, give Columbia Station Police a call. Well, domestic violence is a growing epidemic, especially among teens. And today an event was held to spread the message there is no excuse for abuse. The story tonight at 6.30. They are faces you see on TV and in the paper. Women murdered at the hands of a loved one. You gotta remember that you... But when the story ends, do you forget Tanya, Shauna, Gina, was the lesson lost as quickly as you changed the channel. We're here empowering women, giving them tools and knowledge. Dolores Presley is one of many speakers today at the Soul of a Woman Expo, where in between the tables of candles and purses, those in attendance took home a powerful message to stand up to domestic violence. Maybe just this um, event will help bring awareness to it and maybe people be more you know, vocal about it. And that's the point, to be vocal. Admit that you have a problem, get help, and get away. But Dolores says you need to have a plan or you'll likely end up in an abusive relationship once again. And ask questions, you know, why am I here? Why am I being abused? And those being victimized aren't the only ones who need to ask questions. It's going on too often. There's too many mothers, sisters, friends, friends of friends, that it just, it's behind the doors. It needs to be brought out to the forefront to help people. Because speaking up and speaking out is the only way to end the cycle of violence that has already claimed too many. And we have more information about stopping domestic violence on our website at 19actionnews.com. Planning a trip to Europe or know someone heading there? We have an alert from the government about your safety overseas. Has a serial rapist been walking your streets? I'm Ed Gallick. What's coming out now about a man who attacked a woman at a stoplight? You're watching 19 Action News. Honest, fair, everywhere. Well, we've learned of yet another case against a man already accused of attacking a woman at a red light and then raping her. Ed Gallick shows us in a story you will see only here on 19 Action News. Now you got to wonder, serial rapist Otilio Allen just charged with an old attack already... And we have an important travel alert to tell you about this evening from the U.S. State Department. A terror alert is in effect for any American living or traveling to Europe. The U.S. State Department wants Americans to pay close attention to their personal safety. Officials say right now there is a potential for a terrorist attack in Europe. We have to be vigilant everywhere, and we've been here for three weeks now and really haven't seen any problems, haven't felt unsafe in any way. Now, this alert being issued is just one step below a formal travel warning, which advises Americans not to visit Europe at all. Well, next on 19 Action News, a couple of bad guys up to no good break into a video store, and it is all caught on tape. 